OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Thank you. Welcome everyone to supporting English learners in realizing their career goals. Uh, as Elisa said, she's uh, doing a dual role today of uh, being our moderator as well as our presenter. So I'm here with you, Lori Howard, I'm CASAS uh, Program Specialist Coordinator specializing in IELCE or EL Civics, and Elisa Takeuchi from Garden Grove Adult Education. Let's see if I can advance my slide. Here we go. So this is our agenda for today. I'm going to give you a little introduction to ILCE. Just to, as a reminder, most of you are fully aware of it, but uh, as a reminder, what we're talking about today. And then Elisa is going to talk about uh, the workforce training program for English language learners at Garden Grove Adult Education. And this is uh, training for being coming a general office clerk. And I think she has a few uh, things about future plans she's going to tell you today as well. So first of all, to get to know you all a little bit, if you would uh, type the kind of organization you work for, an adult school, community college, CBO, or other, could you type that in the chat, please? So we can see who's with us today. Adult school. Adult school, great. Okay, so we're mostly adult school people. That's good for us to know. Anybody else? Okay, transition to tech college, that's good. Oh, that's good. Okay, great. Okay, great, and we just have one more question. You can go ahead and keep typing that if you haven't yet. Uh, but our second question is, how familiar are you with IELCE programs? And I want you to type in number one, if you're not familiar at all, up to number five, if you're very familiar. So one to five, how familiar are you with IELCE programs? Uh-huh, we have a big range, but a lot of one, so good. Mm -hmm. Okay, but a, a big range, uh, so you either, aren't familiar or you're uh, very familiar. So that's good to know, that's okay. So today, uh, this model then will help you if you're not familiar, you'll learn a lot, but it will be probably be a lot of information for you. So don't worry, just take it in slowly. And those of you who are familiar, I hope you're here because you're wanting to improve the program you already have. And um, we're gonna talk about that too, so that's great. So by the end of this session, you participants will be able to identify at least one workforce training model for English learners. So as I said, Elise is going to talk about one specifically and then a little bit more. And then she's going to talk about the components of her program, the successes, any challenges they encountered, which will hopefully help you as you develop your programs, and then talk a little bit about a remote learning and assessment. Uh, if that's involved in her program uh, and other things as well. But as you listen to Elisa, I would like you to consider how the elements of the model could be implemented at your agency to either improve or begin a workforce training program for English language learners. You may have heard that the WIOA grant is coming up for application this summer for uh, 22 for, I'm sorry, for 23-24. So this summer in August, the application will be open. So if your agency hasn't yet participated in WIOA or in IELCE 243 workforce training, now next summer will be your opportunity to begin that process and apply for the 22-23, no, uh, whatever, the next year is not this coming year, 22-23, 23-24, I think is the first year. But in any case, you'll, the application will be open. So it's a great time to be thinking about it and learning how to do it from an expert, Elisa, and her agency. So oh, tell sorry. you a little, sir, mm -hmm. it's okay. So tell you a little bit about our uh, IELCE, which stands for Integrated English Literacy and Civics Education Funding. So many of you might've participated in our regular EL Civics funding, we have that number 231 for regular EL Civics, connecting students to the community. Um, and we've had that funding since 19, uh, well, it came out in 1998. California started their program in 2000, and we've had it all that time. And it included workforce training at the time, but it wasn't emphasized. But in 2014, 
the grant was reauthorized and it be, there became more emphasis and more funding for workforce training. So just for background information, the grant is the Adult Education and Family Literacy Act and the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act Title II of AFLA. So it's WIOA Title II and it's part of the AFLA uh, Adult Family Literacy Act. So that's good for you to know because you might hear those acronyms. So from the beginning, uh, this is really this has not changed since 2000 really. Uh, that integrated English literacy and civics education is education services which enable competency in the English language. When we first started the grant, some agencies started teaching in uh, the native language, which is not cannot be part of the grant. And actually, we heard about it recently that some CTE class was being taught in the native language. That is not what this money is for. You can do that but you can't use this grant to do that, okay? Because this is an English language grant. We're teaching the language needed in order to access the community or access training and work. So education services, which enable competency in English language and advanced skills needed to function effectively as parents, workers, and citizens of the United States. That's the general EL Civics Grant 231. And then also, an emphasis on workforce training down here at the bottom, now my cursor may include workforce training. If you apply for the 243 funding, then you will uh, combine English language support and workforce training. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. So this is the symbol we use to show the combination of those. And the combination is this thing in the center in the green integrated education and training. When you combine adult education and literacy, which in the case of what we're talking about today is the ESL component, the literacy component is ESL. And then you have workforce preparation activities that help students prepare for or participate in, in workforce training. And then you include the workforce training, all these three elements together become the integrated education and training or IET that you probably have heard of. So our IELCE, the English part of that grant supports the IET, the integrated education and training. So just a little bit to tell you about our EL Civics grant, and for those of you who, who aren't that familiar, that our, all parts of our EL Civics grant include performance-based instruction. So IELCE, EL Civics is a performance-based instruction and assessment system. So the instruction is given in a performance-based manner. That means students don't just write about it or take a grammar test, but they actually do something like complete a job application or do an interview. So for example, we have a civic objective and those are general competencies that help students access their community for Civic Objective 33, the objective, general objective is identify and access employment and training resources to obtain and keep a job. That is supported by a, set, a series of what we call COAPs, Civic Objectives and Additional Assessment Plans. And a COAP is a performance-based assessment. Agencies are tasked with looking at the assessment, planning instruction that will help students complete that assessment. So the instruction is performance-based. We're teaching to the test. How do you fill out an application? And then we're testing, giving students an opportunity to fill out an application and show or demonstrate that they can do it. So uh, sample assessment tax for co uh, Civic Objective 33 are, as I said, complete a job application or demonstrate successful job interview techniques. So those would be two assessment tasks. When students complete the assessment, they get a pass fail and there's a whole system of payment points, et cetera, related to this. So this is a pay for performance system. Students get, receive instruction and take a test. If they pass the test, the agency receives money for having uh, helped that student become competent in an objective. So uh, as Elisa talks, I'd like you to think about how might your agency implement some of the elements of the programs that you're going to hear about. 
Okay, so that's your task while you're listening. And Elizabeth has a question. Would it be accurate to say that we're teaching to a test that closely resembles a real life situation? And it exactly would. We are, we are wanting to be uh, one step away. We'd like to be real life, but we can't be in the classroom. So we're one step away from actually doing something in the real world. Yes, and we're teaching to the test. If that doesn't mean we're giving students the answers. So for example, I like to give the example of uh, talking to a doctor about uh, an illness. So in the classroom, we might teach uh, 10 illnesses and their symptoms. So students are learning all 10 of them. But on test day, sort of like real life, uh, for example, you, uh, the teacher could uh, put out four uh, three by five cards face down on a table, have the student pick one, and on the one they pick, there would be an illness. So student has learned all 10, but they don't know which one they'll be asked about. And then they have a conversation with the doctor about the illness that is set on their card. So that helps uh, the randomness of uh, a, a real life situation. We never know how what kind of sickness we're gonna get. Okay. Uh, and Aileen, I'm glad you're back with us. So anyways, as, I, as uh, Elisa talks, I hope you'll consider how you might uh, implement some of the things she's going to talk about. And again, she's going to be talking about general office clerk from Garden Grove Adult Education. So I'm going to stop sharing and let uh, Elisa share her slides. Nice. Thank you so much. So give me one minute. Let me find all my Zooms. Oops. Uh -oh. oh, there we go. Are you able to see my slide? Yes. Great. Thank you so much. All right. So now let me let me resituate myself. Um, so before I start, I just want to uh, now that I, I heard uh, Lori's part about the um, Weola grant um, being open again this summer for uh, the next two years uh, for potential. 2324. Um, I, I know for a long time. Okay, so Garden Grove has uh, done the we've we've been part of the WOA and the EL Civics from almost the get go. Um, I started in Garden Grove in 2001, and I think we started EL Civics probably in 2003. And so you know we have been doing this for a long time uh, with just uh, EL Civics, and I can't encourage you enough. If you're an agency that just hasn't been able to um, uh, app apply through the window because it took a long time. They didn't accept a lot of people for a long time. And then slowly and surely the application has been open. But if you do have an opportunity to do it, I highly encourage it. I, I think that it's a very good opportunity for you um, as an agency to be WIOA funded. And so um, as I'm talking through um, the evolution of our IELCE program, um, I want to just reiterate that it's it hasn't been an easy process for us and and you know it's this isn't going to be some glowing like oh it's been so great and perfect and we're so just so huge and stuff because there are agencies who are who have been very successful with the IELCE and um, are much bigger programs um, but I really do just want to kind of give you the uh, perspective from our end and and the struggles that we kind of went through and are still going through and um, if you are an admin or if you're a teacher and you're really just not too sure of how this whole process works uh, I will kind of talk to you about it through through at least through my lens um, so as you can see on the screen um, I work for Garden Grove Adult Education which is in Southern California and we um, are working with our uh, one of our consortia. And I say one because we are in a very unique situation where geographically we are in three different regions. And so we are actually involved with three different consortia. And so it's been a very big, um, I know some of like admins are right now going, <gasps> Okay, because, and, and rightfully so, um, because we, we are being pulled in different directions, but at the same time, we're able to um, collaborate with the three different um, consortia on different, with different avenues. And so the one I'm going to be talking about today is with our Rancho Santiago Adult Education Consortium, and their main um, 
Community College is Santa Ana College. And through Santa Ana College, we are the adult education um, facility for this consortium, as well as uh, Santa Ana College also has a School of Continuing Education, which is an adult ed program through the college. So um, this is the collaboration that we have built through them uh, so with one of our consortium. Um, I will be talking about the um, business and finance pathway that we had worked with Santa Ana College with. And then also um, we are just, just within the last few weeks, we are starting to develop a new pathway called business office technology. And I'll go into that at the end. So just to give you a small background information about us, again, we're at Garden Grove Adult Education in Garden Grove, California. We are, just to give you some reference, we are 1.5 miles away from Disneyland. <laughs> that gives you any clue. Um, so our population right now is primarily Vietnamese and uh, with a large community of uh, Latinos. And we had used to have a very large population of Koreans, um, but they have kind of migrated into another section um, uh, in an another city next to us. And so, uh, like I was saying earlier, geographically, we have schools in the Garden Grove district in different regions. And so that is what um, has, um, allowed us or has prepared us for being in three different consortia. So we have a school, a school in one particular region. So now we are a part of a different consortium. And then primarily most of our, um, our school sites are within um, another consortium. So we do have relationships with them. And then we do have some schools that are within the Rancho Santiago uh, consortium. And so now this is the collaboration that we're making with them. Uh, let's see. So like I was telling you from the beginning, our ISL program is very small. Um, in 2017, 2019, um, we didn't know, we didn't know what we were going to do. Um, because of our situation, uh, we have a very large campus and it's one of the oldest campuses in Garden Grove. I think we're the second oldest uh, actual campus. And so we had housed many different CTE courses and, at, at, and it's been flipping flop back and forth between being part of the adult education program and then it switched to the Garden Grove Unified School District program. And then just recently within the last two years, right before pandemic, it got shifted back again into adult education. So a lot of this ILCE where we're trying to connect with the CTE programs based on our campus have been very difficult because it's been a, a tug of war between who, who is um, in control or who has access to these classes. And so um, just to piggyback a little bit with um, what Lori was saying about um, EL Civics in general and, and IET, um, I think, and especially now with the pandemic, we know that the labor workforce is low. They, they are in desperate need of workers in the trades. And so prior to the pandemic, uh, you know, the whole push for adult education and community colleges to work together to accelerate learning so that because we had so many CTE courses, all community colleges and, you know, adult, uh, adult schools, may contain CTE courses, but many of our ESL students weren't prepared uh, with the language to succeed in that. And many of the CTE courses were uh, fee-based. And then on top of that, once you do the course, then perhaps there's gonna be some sort of licensure or certi certification, and they didn't have the language skills to um, be successful. And so what the idea was is that to take the adult education um, classes for ESL support for the CTE classes. So students at the simultaneous um, instruction would have CTE um, instruction as well as ESL support so that it would help our students that are EL learners to succeed and get certified in a much faster way than to go only through the ESL courses and then transfer over into CTE because now it's, it's simultaneous and the, the pathway was going to be much quicker. So again, many adult education um, sites um, 
were real successful with this. They, they really worked well with their community college and then they were able to make these connections. Um, for us, it was a little bit more difficult because again, we are housed in a section where we were being pulled in different directions, but we really wanted to do this. We really wanted to try to create some courses so that we had the CTE and the ESL support at the same time, but now it's a, it was a question of where would these all be located? And so, um, as you can see on the screen, we started with employability skills. And so Santa Ana College already had this pathway to have students as they completed these um, stepping stones, uh, you know, scaffolded courses at the end would gain uh, an industry skills certificate so that the um, student can now take that into the workforce and um, be confident that they were successfully um, able to get a job and feel confident that they had the skills to do that job. And so uh, we started that um, right in 2017 and we just, we were literally like tippy toeing in the water. So what we did was we brought in a Santa Ana uh, instructor, a uh, community college instructor to come onto our campus one night a week. So the students would get the ESL instruction uh, three nights a week and then she would come one night a week. and um, you know, it was it was okay. The students really enjoyed it, um, but because they were only coming one day a week for the actual CTE part of it, you know, their progress wasn't really as um, accelerated as we had hoped, and probably as Santa Ana had hoped too. And that was all because of scheduling. So again, we still didn't have that that real connection with our community college yet to really get the scheduling down and really trying to uh, create this course that would help benefit both of us. Um, through that, though, as like the next school year came around, we had some ideas. We took the, the areas of growth for that particular class and we took the successes and we tried to create another course. And now we're doing the general office skills through Santa Ana College. And so, again, um, it was now let's take a look like what what are the challenges? What are our obstacles? Why why wasn't that other class um, successful? And a lot of it had to do with scheduling. So one of the things that. Um, we thought would be a great solution was that we had some of our Lincoln, my school, Garden Grove uh, school instructors become CTE instructors. And so because of experience in the workforce or because, you know, they had to maybe take a test or somewhat, they actually got their CTE credential. So they now were able to be our CTE instructor and our ESL instructor at the same time. And so that really alleviated some of our um, obstacles uh, into creating some of these classes that we didn't have to, um, we weren't, um, I can't think of the word, uh, we weren't dependent. We weren't dependent on getting a schedule together with um, a community college instructor. So Santa Ana College hired our three ESL teachers who are now CTE instructors for half. So two days a week, they work for the community college and then two days a week, they work for Garden Grove. And so that was kind of a workaround for us on how we could start getting the general office um, skills certi certification program started at our campus. So as you can see on the screen, um, this is a, a screenshot of what the general office clerk um, entails from the point of view of Santa Ana College. And so we, um, we, we, what we did was we took their courses and we talked with the instructors who are now CTE instructors as well. And we said, okay, how will we schedule this? What are we going to offer our students as well as any student from Santa Ana College that also wanted to take it on our campus? So it wasn't just for ESL students native English speakers could take these courses, the CTE courses, and they didn't need the ESL support. So our ESL students would also get the ESL support. So native English speakers would take the class two days a week, and then our ESL students would take four days a week, two CTE and two ESL. And so that was one of the models. So way back in the day, um, when all of this was just starting to blossom, um, we had learned about the IBEST approach, which was um, 
which came from Seattle, Washington, and it was that kind of co-use. So it was either, you know, you had a CT instructor and ESL instructor working together simultaneously to help your ESL students be successful navigating through the course, or you had maybe two days on, two days off CTE, ESL, which is what we, we used as our approach. Um, so there were different models that could be used. And so we were trying to think, okay, these are the courses that are required to get the certification. How can we best schedule it? And so these were some of the thought processes that went through our, um, our team's um, uh, discussions. And in addition, we also had the digital literacy for office and admin support workers. Again, these were also tiers from Santa Ana College that students could move through the process to get these different certifications. And these, again, are in, uh, industry um, skilled certifications through the community college. So as I mentioned before, uh, we had some of our ESL instructors become CTE instructors. Because of their life, their personal life outside of Garden Grove, they were able to um, become CTE instructors in technology and business because of the experience, the, the work experience they had either previously or simultaneously that could be used as part of their um, credentialing process. So um, to be a CTE instructor, then you need to have X amount of years of experience in that field. And then you have to you know, show proof of how you use that industry to become a CTE certified uh, credentialed teacher. And so, um, like I said, three of our teachers qualified. And so it made it a lot easier for us to navigate how we wanted to house certain classes on our campus, as well as still work with the community college because they're giving us the courses. But now we're using our campus and our um, instructors to, to teach it. And so that actually worked out really, really well for us. Um, then we also incorporated Burlington English. So in, in addition to, not in lieu of, in addition to the course um, outlines from the community college and the instruction that was given there, we also had Burlington English to supplement all that curriculum so that students can now um, maybe take that umbrella of the whole general office clerk and then now work specifically into different um, pathways that they wanted to go into. So for example, you know, why would they want to have this particular certification? I want a particular job or I want to go into this field or I'm looking into this field. Burlington English was allowed them to kind of explore different pathways that they could follow through to see if that's something that they really actually wanted to do. In addition to that, we also incorporated EL Civics. So because some of the EL Civics are now, um, so for those that are not familiar with EL Civics, this is gonna sound a little bit over your head, but that's okay. So the funding for EL Civics was now um, available to us as a workforce IET, IELCE course, so that it gave us a little bit of an edge to try to gain a little bit more money from the funding of WIOA. And so we were perfectly happy with our 231 funds. Um, you know, no problem. It didn't have anything to do with workforce training. But now that we were trying to incorporate more of these IELCE classes, we wanted to take advantage of using some of these EL civics to kind of bump up our funding for that. And um, uh, CASAS and CDE were very, very helpful for us because we were still kind of lost. We really didn't have this clear pathway yet. And we were just kind of trying different things. And then they really steered us in the right direction of, yes, you're in the right direction. You're going the right way with this, but we're going to have to kind of change some of these things. And so, you know, it wasn't like this a wall, brick wall, and they weren't going to support us or anything. They really wanted us to succeed. And so they were going to try their best to help us um, fix any 
challenges that we were having that the CD was like, mm, you know, that's not really the, you know, the vision that we had for this, you know, how about if you tried this instead, blah, blah, blah. And so then uh, we were able to work with them about that. And it's still, it's still an ongoing process with us. Because again, like I said, our, with our whole situation with um, where are the CTE classes housed and who can access them, we're still struggling a little bit with um, how to incorporate that, uh, those three components. Um, so now that we've kind of has this vision, we have the cooperation with the um, community college. Now it's like, what do we do? So what we had to do was the students that were very interested in this new um, CTE ESL support combo, they had to register with Santa Ana College for the CTE courses, and then they uh, registered with Garden Grove Adult Education for their ESL support. And so um, it was a different process and, you know, the, the registration process for community college is quite different. And, and at the time, we were really um, trying to transition our higher level ESL, our ABE students, our high school diploma students, and we were really trying to get them transitioning into um, community college, even if it was just for a summer course or some workshops or things like that, so that they could have a, a community college ID. And so that made the transition a little bit easier for us because we had so many students that were already at that point. But that would be another consideration if you're just beginning with this whole process, really working with your community college on how to make the transition from adult education to community college as seamless as possible for the ESL students. Um, because even just registration was very difficult. And so we were able to work with the adult education department of the community college to actually kind of revamp the registration process to make it more language, uh, language level friendly. And because they never had that experience before, they didn't know that they needed to change that until we actually asked them to. So those are the kinds of conversations that you might want to have with your consortium, um, you know, and the powers that be that can help you help your students transition into uh, community college seamlessly. Um, and then also, you know, just with any CTE course as well, a college class, especially a CTE course, um, the amount of homework or the the just the all consumption of of the class and how many hours of homework they were going to have to do and how much they were going to have to study and the book and the vocabulary, those are all into consideration too of how can we help our ESL students. Um, the best way we can to help them succeed for that new course. Um, the other thing that was really important to us from the get-go with our talks with the, um, the consortium was that we wanted to make sure that all of our students had access to the counselor, whether it was our Garden Grove counselor or the Santa Ana College counselor. Because again, it was, we knew some things, but we didn't know all of the things that happened with the community colleges. We, we weren't able, we weren't experienced enough to know how to guide our students appropriately through the community college pathway or you know, navigate their system. And so it was very important for us that we had this communication with the community college counselor so that they would be available to our students when they had questions or when they felt like they were falling behind. How can they help them to become successful? So here's our some here's some stats. Um, so before the pandemic, we had about 60 students who were enrolled in our various CTE courses. And um, at the time we had three different pathways and I think five classes. So 60 students, mm, you know, we, we didn't have anything to compare it to because that was our first time doing it, but we, we could compare it to other agencies and we know that we were not very big. Um, then once our school closed and we went through the pandemic, um, our numbers definitely dropped because we had so few students who were not interested in online only instruction. And again, that's a very real obstacle when you have CTE courses that especially the ones that are more hands on automotive HVAC uh, welding. Um, you know, how do you navigate with the um, hands on instruction and there's been a lot of very creative ways that people have been doing it but we didn't, we didn't have to look into that, 
yet. And so um, it, you know, wasn't really one of our considerations, but, you know, just not having students not wanting to come onto, I mean, sorry, not having students able to come onto campus to do the physical, you know, uh, technology things that we were doing in the classroom that really distracted a lot of students and, and it just it had them just drop and we didn't see them again. And so now that our school is open again, we do simultaneous instruction. We did not gain a lot of our students back, um, you know, that that had left during the pandemic. They did not come back um, when we finally opened up our classes again. So that was a real struggle for us. And so now, um, and then because we were, had a little situation with our community college, um, and that because our numbers were so low, they forced us to close um, a couple of our classes. And so that's why our numbers are about 20. So again, it's not for the lack of trying or it's not for the lack of um, really trying to incorporate this community, this um, collaboration with the community colleges. It really is just from the onset of pandemic and not being able to have our students or not our students not being coming back to us. So we are um, another another kind of obstacle that happened with our community college is that you know because they had their own set of of um, rules or you know how they were adjusting to online versus in class and they they were saying that they didn't want us to, for the CTE portion they didn't want us to do simultaneous instruction so for us right now we have in class students and online students at the same time and Santa Ana College did not want that they wanted only in class students so all the the students that were you know we're very comfortable being online in zoom and learning that whole time in, in the pandemic stopped coming because they didn't feel safe they did they had transportation issues they had child care issues whatever the issues were they weren't coming back on campus and so we did lose quite a few students from that as well so the, again just for administrators and for teachers these are kinds of the struggles that we had gone through um, that we had to kind of look up beyond the box and say, how can we fix this? What do we need to do? So in order to qualify for these, um, you know, the IELCE, the IET programs, there ne must need, there needs to be a single set of objectives. So as I was saying before, where you have a CTE course, we've all had CTE courses or we know of CTE, vocational learning, that's what it used to be called. And those objectives that they require need to be also in the ESL support. Those same objectives, we need to share those objectives. So it's not an ESL beginning high class and some of the students are just learning some of the vocabulary for this class. It's with intention that these students that need ESL support are wanting to have this particular CTE pathway. And that's one of the key things that really took us a long time to figure out. Um, so we have an HVAC class here on campus and we do have a, an automotive class here on campus. And so now we are trying to figure out a way, how can we bring in the ESL support? And so a couple of different ways is that the CT instructor gives us their textbook or their curriculum. And then the ESL, an, an ESL teacher or a team of teachers will go through that and ESLify it. <laughs> that's, that's like my word. So we take the vocabulary words and we pull those out we take um, you know important concepts and we take those out and we make powerpoint or you know we make slot pre slide presentations we create worksheets for them we do all these things that we would do for our normal esl students and uh, but now the focus is directly on to the cte course uh, the nice thing with working with your uh, community college on this is that they have already done most of the work. So community colleges take an extraordinary amount of time to uh, get their CTE courses qualified. So, you know, for certification. And so it takes like, it could take up to like two years for them to come up with the curriculum, send it off to the state chancellor's office and get it approved and then brought back to the um, the, the agency. And so why would an adult agency want to recreate the, that course outline when all we have to do is take it from the community co college and then um, scaffold it so that our, our ESL students can work their way up through it at the same time. 
So again, some of the challenges I, I've, I've mentioned some of them before were, um, you know, in the pre-pandemic, the schedule was the biggest issue because they had one teacher that was available, but she was only available one night a week. You know, that really didn't. Um, it helped us to kind of get our foot in the door to kind of figure out, like, like see how it would work, but it really didn't help us with our um, acceleration to have our students get more knowledge, you know, just one day a week for the CTE portion of it. They were getting all the ESL support, no problem, but we, they weren't getting the CTE part of it. So we, we tried it for a semester, uh, for actually a couple of semesters, and, um, you know, just kind of worked from that. Also, the staff, we had to decide, you know, who was going to teach the ESL part of it, um, you know, because we had, um, you know, we we were busting. We, we had many, before the pandemic, we had a very large program and we had lots of waiting lists and stuff. So all of our teachers were already occupied in other classes. So to pull them out of a normal ESL intermediate high class and transfer them into an ESL support class, we, we just couldn't do it. In fact, all of our classrooms were filled too. So we didn't even have a classroom to work with. So those were some of the challenges that we had to kind of figure out as time was going by. But then all of a sudden the pandemic hit and now we have issues with enrollment. We had an issues with attendance. And then um, again, like I said, with the remote only, um, it was very difficult for our students to get that hands-on experience while they're at home and on different devices because some of them were on phones or iPads and then if you're trying to teach uh, keyboarding processes or you know things or word or something it's much more difficult on these um, other devices rather than the desktop computers that we had in our classrooms. <clears throat> All right, so some of our successes. <laughs> so um, one of the biggest successes prior to the pandemic was the collaboration with the community college. We had no collaboration with community colleges prior to this um, because you know this introduction to IELCE and the whole um, consortia um, uh, push this is when we started to have connections with our community colleges before we had no talks with them at all there was no um, even collaboration to talk about, hey, how can we, you know, how can we get our adult ed students uh, prepared to transition into community college? And that was probably one of our biggest downfalls. So now that we have this collaboration, we are really talking with them a lot about how do we transition the students um, so that they can become most the most successful they can in a, a California community college. Um, also, the, the opportunities for the students, like I said, we never offered this before, we never even talked to the community colleges before, now all of a sudden we were opening up these different classes, now, they weren't necessarily the IE, IELCE pathways, but we were actually just doing a transition English class, where the students are now academic English, so that the teacher at Garden Grove Adult was preparing them for community college English, and we all know that that could be a very large gap, and so that was just one of the examples of us trying to, to shorten out this bridge between the two. And then we also, um, we also offered a writing class, a grammar and writing class with a community college instructor, but with our Lincoln education students so that they can get a feel for what it's actually like to be with a community college professor. And he treated them just as he would um, you know, a, a native English speaker English class. And uh, man, it was a big eye opener. And so looking back on it now, it was kind of, we started this whole ESL support because they would go to the native English community college English class two days a week. And then they would go to ESL two days a week. And so our ESL instructor was preparing them for that next class or that next, you know, uh, lesson or homework or things like that. So even though it wasn't workforce, we were still getting that collaboration in, which was really, really nice. Once the pandemic hit, um, some of the um, <laughs> successes, the, the, the silver linings was that because the students were all on Zoom, their direct application to some of the skills that they needed to learn was right there. They had no choice but to learn 
uh, keyboarding because they were typing if they had a computer at home. And we also offered um, Chromebook checkouts because again, this kind of typing is not the same as this kind of typing. And so we really needed those students to have the Chromebooks so that they were experiencing um, the skills that they needed to be successful for the general office clerk um, on the device that they most likely would be using in the workplace. And then um, now we were able to open up these classes for students who weren't able to come into the campus for whatever reason, childcare, transportation, health. And they were able to join our classes um, uh, remotely that they didn't have that opportunity before. So it was kind of a, a big surprise for us that we really thought all we saw at first was all the students that we lost, but then um, actually, we gained other students that we never had before. So that was kind of nice as well. So a recent change that I was um, sort of going about um, was that just in the last couple of weeks, um, we have, because our previous collaboration with Santa Ana College, um, had to be canceled. Our general office clerk um, computer, sorry, our computer basics class had to be canceled because we didn't have enough students in the class and Santa Ana College um, wouldn't allow it to continue because the enrollment was so low. So what do we do now is that we ended up purchasing, um, our director went and uh, she and I both went to um, uh, a conference and we saw a presentation separately um, on ICEV. ICEV is a private company who has worked with industry skilled companies to develop these courses that will enable students to complete a course and be industry skills certified. And so um, I saw the presentation and I thought, hmm, that's kind of interesting. Like, I'd like to know a little bit more about that. And later, just on a whim, my director said, hey, I went to this presentation. It was really great about, you know, uh, these uh, CTE courses that uh, can be done online or, you know, that we can, I'm like, I went to the same one, blah, blah, blah. So we kind of started talking about it and she went forward with it. And so she ended up purchasing the, um, um, the business office technologies course through this company. And so we shifted our students from computer basics over to the business office technologies. And I'm going to share with you just that for the next few minutes. So this is no way a plug for ICEV because really it's so new to us. I mean, I just kind of learned about it like about two, yesterday and the day before. So um, it, it's no plug on them by any means, but um, I will say that, you know, as we're going through this, it seems to be working for us and in just in the few weeks that we've had it. And so um, let me kind of go through the process of, of what we did. So we purchased the, um, the course, and so you purchase the course, it's a, an umbrella purchase, and then you pay for seats or licenses. And then once the students are ready to take a hundred question test to see if they pass, they have to get 70% to pass and then they get the certification. And so um, you pay for the tests as well. So you pay for the course, you pay for the seats, and then you pay for the tests as they come along. Now, if a student does not pass the test one, the first time, they do have a second chance for free. And then after that, so we are paying for this. We are paying for this. And then if a student does not pass the second time, you know, we encourage them, of course, to go back into the course, go back through the, the areas that they that they're have that they're struggling with, and then they can take the test again, but they'll pay it out of pocket on themselves. What this is uh, really nice is that it really helped um, meet all the needs of our students. So us as a school, we are providing this course for them. Now, also what we heard was that if an, uh, a workplace has a need for their employees to get a certification in something in that particular field, the employers could also sponsor employees to actually, actually take the uh, the courses to get certified as well. And, and then also individuals who are, may not be connected to a school site or may not have a job yet, but they really wanna get certified in certain areas, they can actually do these courses on their own. So the, the industry um, that 
IACEV used to prepare for the um, business uh, office technology certification was Express Employment. Express Employment is an international staffing agency. They work in uh, quite a few different countries and they are one of the leading um, companies that prepare people to be better exposed to uh, certain types of jobs. And so they worked with the ICEV to create these courses um, for technology skills and business skills. So not only are our students learning, you know, the hard skills, you know, keyboarding and Microsoft Word and, you know, Google products and things like that. They're also learning about business skills, how to conduct um, business uh, language appropriateness, um, things like that. So it's kind of an all encompassing um, course. These are the skills that when the student completes the course will gain uh, for this particular pathway. So again, like I said, it's not just uh, the primary is the office technology there. They really delve into these different uh, types of digital skills that uh, our students will need to know in order to get an entry level job. The word processing, digital presentations, spreadsheets, um, uh, data sheets, desktop publishing, and then here comes the workplace communication, appropriate language, things like that, and then also um, the uh, uh, ethical applications in the workplace. So, you know, giving them the full comprehensive idea of what it's like to be um, in a job. So for the future, beyond just that new course that we had just started a few weeks ago, we are also in the process of working with um, our district and with our community colleges on adding additional classes to our campus. That's been one of the biggest obstacles for us because, because of our consortia issues, we are only allowed to house certain CTE courses from one of our, uh, from one of the consortiums. And so um, working with them very directly on what courses can we offer on our campus that we can get support from you and we can support you with those. And then also um, taking the two classes that we have here already, the HVAC and the automotive and um, developing those support classes, the ESL support classes for that. Um, basically, that's it. I am like exhausted. <laughs> that was a lot of talking, um, you know, and I'm really sorry that I was really rushing through that, but I really wanted to give you just kind of the bird's eye view of our program and, and the struggles and the successes and the process that we had to go through to work with our district, our community colleges, our consortium um, to really make this happen so that we can fulfill students' needs on really getting them into the workforce um, in an accelerated fashion.